provide a little bit more context there. Uh, obviously, there have been questions about the attestation uh, and verification process and why are we just doing an attestation and why aren't we doing verification? Um, and of course, the mask mandates, uh, you know, with, with LA County requiring the mask mandate and of course with public health, their recent, uh, you know, what they're saying is a strong recommendation for wearing masks indoors. So I'm hoping to provide some clarification there. And then of course, you know, providing an update of where we are, outline next steps moving forward. Um, you know, the, the town halls have been great. We've, we've been able to get a better feel for what the needs are more specifically and hope to, uh, you know, get things going ASAP and really ramping up our communication strategy as we get closer to the start of the fall semester. And I just, I just wanna reiterate again, the importance of, you know, us supporting our students. And as, as Mitch mentioned, you know, we have, you know, incoming cohort uh, from fall 2020 that probably have never set foot on campus before. And, and in the town halls, they're like, you know, how am I gonna find buildings? How's that gonna work? Are you gonna support us? We're not new, but we are new. And so that's important, of course, our incoming cohorts. And then for the juniors and seniors, I, I wanna make sure we're seeing them to the finish line. So, um, and of course, uh, plenty of time for Q&A as the last two town halls. Next slide. So even though the CSU policy is on hold, just a brief summary and update. Um, I think President Biden was hoping that FDA, I think he mentioned last night, that FDA approval, hopefully by maybe September, um, early October, um, we'll have to wait and see. Right? I think there was a New York Times article that was predicting September, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but I tell you, since, you know, no matter when it happens, if we anticipate it happening in mid fall semester, you know, lots of things are going to be happening. We're going to be in full swing. Um, everyone's going to be super busy. So what I'm really hoping for is the things that we're implementing now will allow for a seamless transition when things are finalized. And, and basically, you know, the summary here is requiring vaccinations for all employees and students. Uh, we will provide the CSU policy provides uh, medical and religious exemptions. We have to work through that process and also testing will be required for those with exemptions. Next slide. And right now the current status, that policy is still being uh, bargained uh, with the unions through the chancellor's office. It's being bargained centrally, uh, currently in process. And um, I think those things are that, that those negotiations are moving forward accordingly. And uh, the proposed policy, that, and this alludes to some of the questions I've heard earlier about why are we just focusing on attestation right now, uh, but the CSU proposed policy doesn't include a provision requiring employees to provide proof of vaccination upon request. And uh, anything more rigorous uh, will need to be bargained locally per campus. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, obviously, again, waiting for full FDA approval of at least one vaccine. Um, it's interesting. Students have a lot of questions about that. What's the holdup? What's going on with that? It was, it was an interesting dialogue last night um, and hopefully mid-fall. And the UC versus the CSU, and, and I'm not a legal scholar or an attorney by any means, but uh, the UCs actually have a provision in our state constitution that grants them uh, some special authority to do these types of things, which is why they were able to implement their uh, flu vaccination requirement uh, last academic year. Um, you know, when we first started talking about mandatory vaccines under the EUA, uh, did a little informal research, came across this. This is from earlier in the spring. Uh, it's just a bit of a blog out of UC Berkeley and just a little bit of context. So we'll post the slides. Uh, you can access that, that article there. It provides a little bit more context. But there are a host of other logistical issues as well. Uh, but this is just one of them. And, and um, you know, I have a meeting at the system level tomorrow. Uh, we'll see where this goes, but as of right now, the CSU is choosing to, to hold course, um, especially if FDA approval is on the horizon sooner than later. Next slide. All right, Cal OSHA, because the, the CSU uh, policy is on hold, um, you know, we are currently operating for faculty and staff and employees uh, legally under the revised Cal OSHA guidelines that came out on June 17th. And really, uh, the, the summary here is really about, you know, basically knowing who is vaccinated on, on our community, in our community, who is not vaccinated. And based on that information, uh, you know, basically here, remove almost all requirements for barriers, physical distancing. There is no capacity limits uh, any longer. Uh, and for fully vaccinated employees, Mask wearing is optional. And of course, we, there's a little wrench to that now with the Ventura County Public Health Guidelines and our 
my global email. Uh, but uh, according to Cal OSHA, mask wearing is optional and employees who are not vaccinated or do not have testation on file are required to wear a mask indoors and it's also recommended outdoors. The one thing that is notably missing from the Cal OSHA revised ETS uh, is testing and ongoing surveillance testing for those who do not have an attestation on file. Um, that's notable. Next slide, please. However, on the CDC guidance for institutions of higher education, they do reference that specifically, and their recommendation is simply baseline entry testing. Uh, so if you're not vaccinated or don't have an attestation on file, let's get you know everybody tested who doesn't have that on file upon arrival. And based on the positivity rate, then we could determine the frequency of surveillance testing if it's even necessary based on that initial entry test uh, baseline rate. Um, and in terms of you know, fully vaccinated individuals, CDC obviously have broad guidelines, all of you are aware of that, but really what it does is it, it you know, allows folks to resume activities without a mask or distancing um, if you're fully vaccinated, unless the caveat there required by federal, state, or local laws and regulations. And of course, you don't need testing anymore of traveling within the United States. And uh, if you were exposed to someone who was positive, this is interesting, and it'll be interesting to see how the local uh, authorities or local uh, experts uh, guide us to respond, but exposed to someone who was positive. Uh, according to the CDC guidelines, you don't need to quarantine or get tested unless you're symptomatic, except for certain settings like shelters, detention facilities, and such. Um, so that's where we are at CDC. Uh, at the state level, for higher education, the CDPH is now referring uh, higher education guidance directly to Cal OSHA and the CDPH general guidelines. Uh, some of you may, re may recall this last year, uh, the CDPH came out with specific guidelines for institutions of higher education. And those guidelines came out one week before the start of the semester. Uh, and there were numerous things that we had in the scramble to get in place. Uh, this year, they're saying they're getting out of that business, telling higher education how to navigate it and directing the Cal OSHA. That being said, K-12, they're chiming in and are recommending masks for all indoors activities regardless of vaccination status. And we get to the more local level of Terry County Public Health. Uh, as all of you know, last week, LA County, they put out initially a, a recommendation and they moved that to a mandate for uh, masks indoors regardless of vaccination status. Last Friday, July 16th, Ventura County Public Health came out saying we're staying the course. Uh, we're saying mask wearing is optional for vaccinated individuals and unvaccinated individuals need to wear masks indoors. However, just Monday, July 19th, uh, they came out the briefing strongly recommending that community members wear masks indoors regardless of vaccination status and businesses are asked to expect universal masking for customers entering indoor areas. And obviously this was a big uh, point of discussion and rightfully so in our last two town halls, lots of correspondence on this and I hope you've checked your emails today, but I did send out a Campus Global uh, maybe around 10 o'clock this morning, 10, 15 or so, uh, indicating that we are moving that direction where we're gonna require uh, indoor mass, um, regardless of vaccination status. But I, I, I hope you read through the entire email because I want for a little bit of context. And um, I don't wanna read the email verbatim here, but the parameters that I outlined, um, you know, when you examine the parameters outlined in that briefing, my interpretation uh, was that it suggests that indoor masking is strongly recommended in environments where we don't know who is and who isn't, who is and who isn't vaccinated, right? So large, very public settings. And I'll be honest, I initially did not see Channel Islands as fitting this profile. Maybe with a few exceptions, right? The library, student union, maybe the dining commons. Um, but as outlined in the statement, and they, and they specifically reference, you know, Cal OSHA standards, uh, we are in full alignment with Cal OSHA standards regarding vaccination attestation and, and taking the additional necessary steps to work towards verification and surveillance testing for those who don't have an attestation on file. So I wasn't necessarily convinced that, that CSUC I fit into that, which is why I stated in the last couple of town halls, I, I needed a little bit more time to consult and, and get more clarity. Um, however, you know, that's the beauty of these town halls, right? We got a good sense of what the campus concerns and needs are, this, is, this was one of them, obviously. Um, why not, why aren't we responding to the Ventura County Health, um, public health uh, recommendations? And we're adjusting and pivoting accordingly and doing so um, 
as all of you have stated, in full alignment with the public health recommendations, which is something that we have always said we would do. So I wanna stay consistent with that. And as I stated in my global email, we will continually assess this requirement. I hope it's not forever, right? I don't see that happening. I wanna continually assess the requirement uh, as it relates to public health updates, you know, changing local conditions, and of course the CSU policy when it takes effect. So we'll get into that a little bit more. We can have a little back and forth in the Q&A. Next slide, please. So in terms of attestation, uh, this is how we're moving forward. So we, even in, even though we're requiring everybody to wear masks, we are still moving forward under the Cal OSHA guidelines. And this essentially bargains uh, through the chancellor's office. So we, you know, I know there's been some questions about why are we just doing a self-attestation? That attestation itself, self-attestation had to be bargained and it was, it's being bargained centrally, centrally to the chancellor's office. We have three bargaining units who have signed MOUs uh, allowing attestation, CSUEU, the Teamsters, and CFA. And we have infrastructure in place and we're currently gathering attestations. I'll share a little bit of, of data uh, with you in a little bit. And there are legitimate concerns about that, right? Uh, in the town hall yesterday, there were some concerns about um, you know, whether or not people will be telling the truth. I, I'll be honest, I, I, I believe in our campus community. I truly believe that the large majority of us will be telling the truth on our attestation. But I understand people want a little bit more rigor. Um, in the MOUs that have been signed, and I'm just quoting it there, that as you'll see, if we want employees to provide proof evidence of vaccination, we can do so, but it has to, we, you know, we have to do a meet and confer locally over any impacts of their specific procedures. So we are in that process. I'll have um, Lori Nichols give a couple of updates in a little, in a little bit there. And we have coordinated labor relations, like I said, and, and provided efficient notification to the unions. Next slide. In terms of testing, keep in mind Cal OSHA does not reference this. So I wanna move forward, we wanna move forward with testing. Those who don't have an attestation on file. However, that does re also require a meet and confer at the campus level. And similar to what I said earlier, we have you know, HR is coordinated with labor relations um, and it provided official notification on this as well. And we'll have an update there. Um, and of course, you know, the big question is enforcement. You know, I'll be honest, that's still in, up in the air. How do we how do we enforce our faculty and staff who don't have an attestation on file and refuse to to, you know, do their their regular testing? Um, those are things we're working through and hope to engage the campus community a little bit more with some updates there. Uh, next slide. All right, for the students, um, we're moving in the same direction. We want to have some level of consistency with students and the faculty and staff. And, and you know, this is based on, on some feedback from, from student leaders uh, that they want some consistency and, and, you know, what's required. So for students, attestation, the student portal is live. They're updating their attestations as we speak. Um, however, the difference here is that the student communication has informed students that they are required to provide proof of vaccination upon request. And the portal allows for upload of, of you know, supporting documents of that vaccination verification. So we can move in that, in that direction. Um, also, we are gonna be requiring, students have been notified, regular testing um, and required mask wearing indoors. Well, that's gonna change now, depending on where, where we land when students get back on campus uh, for those who do not certify that they've been vaccinated. So uh, that's happening as we're moving forward now. And uh, there have also been questions from faculty and, and staff, you know, and, and uh, those support areas where, um, you know, students frequently traffic, uh, you know, how do we know who's either vaccinated or tested negative uh, in my class, for example, and, and we had initially talked about developing an app back in the spring, uh, which would let you know whether they're vaccinated or tested negative. It's not going to say vaccinated or tested negative, just, you know, either or to make sure we're in the clear. Uh, but with the anticipation that the, the mandatory vaccination policy through the CSU would be in place, well, that was put on hold. So we're now working on that piece again. Uh, this was a big uh, concern expressed by faculty. Um, and we're working on some concurrent plans to develop a suitable plan that you know, serves the same purpose. If it's not you know, technology savvy with an app, there's other ways we can navigate uh, the purpose and the spirit of what we're trying to do there. And I, I, you know, yesterday there was a lot of discussion about you know, we need to know who's vaccinated. You know, I, I don't want to know who's getting tested. I just vaccinated, and I, that makes sense. I still want to be cognizant, right, of potentially ostracizing those who are not vaccinated. And I know there's variability. Um, there's some interesting comments yesterday about those who are not getting vaccinated. 
And I want to acknowledge that there's variability out there. And I've heard from all aspects of our campus community on this. And there is variability as to why folks aren't vaccinated. And I want to ensure that we're not inadvertently creating an environment that is not welcoming to those students, faculty, and staff, uh, especially those who do have legitimate reasons as to why they're not vaccinated. So you know, that's why we're, we're also trying to move forward towards th this testing model of another layer of safety. Next slide. Some data points for you just briefly. Um, you know, we put out a survey in the spring, uh, in May, and uh, these are the results as of June 9th, but survey went out to all faculty, staff, and students. You can see that the response rate there for students, faculty, staff, and administrators, but of the 2,700 plus that responded, 85% reported that they were fully or partially vaccinated, 5% were planning to get vaccinated. That was promising data. Uh, employees, you know, at the time, that was 67% of our employees who responded. 85% were fully vaccinated, 2% partially, and 2% planning to get vaccinated. And for the students who were polled, you can see the number 69% fully vaccinated, 10% partially, and 6% planning to get vaccinated. And I know for the social scientists out there, this is a, a sample, a sampling of our campus. I know you're also gonna say there's a potential self-selection bias. Uh, those who are vaccinated are more likely to respond to this type of survey, I get it. But I will say, I hope that those numbers have improved since June 9th, um, considering how we've been moving forward with things and the availability of the vaccine. Um, and nonetheless, to me, these are promising data points. More recent data, our housing res ed team put out a survey to every uh, housing student who submitted an application and 95% are fully vaccinated, right? Or intend to get vaccinated by the fall. So again, promising numbers. Next slide. Here are the current attestation data points. Lori, thanks for sending this along. Uh, this is as of this morning. So uh, of the the union groups, the bargaining units that have signed MOUs uh, for CFA, uh, who are most of most of the folks who are off contract, uh, we've got a 30% response rate. So if, if some of you were uh, submitted after attending the town halls, I want to thank you for that. Uh, for the other CSUEU, Teamsters and I'm represented, uh, that jumped 4%, we're now at 50%, and the overall response rate is 30%. So we still have some work to do. Um, Lori Nichols, tells me not to be alarmed that this number is going to get much higher as we get closer. You know, we're still doing a staggered repopulation plan um, and we hope to see these numbers uh, uptick as that gets closer. Students, as of July 18th, you know, we had 1096 total responses to that. 98% uh, were fully vaccinated. And again, uh, we've been really getting the word out to students about submitting their attestations. And that was a big focal point of the town halls as well. Next slide. Okay, centralized reporting. Um, yeah, current status. So we do have a centralized reporting portal. We've had this in place uh, since last year because we did have a small number of, of uh, in-person classes. And, and even for those students who are taking online courses, um, you know, you can report uh, cases of exposure or positive cases. Uh, we encourage and really require everybody to do so. Um, and we have those contact tracing protocols in place. We have a case management response team that has done a phenomenal job in creating these protocols uh, with communication notifications associated with that. Um, we also are working to update our facilities classroom office area response for positive cases. Uh, you know, back in fall of 2020, you know, we had the we had the closed classrooms and spaces for seven days uh, for cleaning, disinfecting. Um, in the spring, I believe that was cut down to three days, and, and now we can do a very very quick turnaround with the updated guidance. But there are implications there. Um, if you're in a classroom and, you know, uh, there was a positive case or an office space or something like that, uh, notifications and how we navigate the communications pieces there. So, but the good news is we can do a, a much quicker turnaround there. Um, in communications, you know, we have a fall 2021 web page, which I want to refer to everybody to. All the communications are there and information on some of the things we're talking about. We have a cross-divisional communications group where, you know, within each division, uh, you know, we're coming together uh, every week to, to communicate what's happening with the planning uh, across divisions to ensure that we're, you know, we're, we're full alignment with one another, not duplicating efforts and maximizing our resources. Of course, our student town halls. And, and the other piece of feedback I've heard this past week, which we have to own fully, is we need to do, you know, a better job of ramping up our communication efforts. And that's something, especially as we get closer to the, the fall semester and repopulating campus, uh, we are cognizant of that. And as part of that, I would also encourage all of you to uh, communicate directly, you know, with your 
managers about individual concerns, situations, um, you know, communication is reciprocal. And, you know, while we'll do a better job of managing and, and getting out more robust communication centrally, I also believe that uh, and this has been something I've, I've always say, I've stated since I've gotten here, but I think the, the more important uh, and meaningful communication happens within programs and divisions as well. So please be sure, and we've talked to all of our managers about that, uh, making sure that we're communicating more effectively with our folks. Uh, vaccination clinics are scheduled. Um, thank you for popping that in the chat there. The first vaccination clinic is scheduled on August 26th, another one on September 23rd. Testing, we're ready to go. You know, we, we have our, our, our student, uh, you know, testing ready to go. Once uh, we move forward on the faculty and staff piece, we're gonna be ready to implement. We have a third party vendor that's been vetted through the chancellor's office. We feel good about that. That will be rapid testing within 30 minutes, nasal swab, uh, so that, uh, you know, we could actually respond right away when we have a positive case with the individual there uh, and, and move forward accordingly. Obviously labor relations, um, you know, we, we talked about what we have to do for the verification and, and surveillance testing. Um, I'm gonna ask Lori to chime in here in a minute on that, but uh, the CSU travel restrictions have been lifted as well. So we're going back to, to pre-pandemic travel um, and the state of California has rescinded their, their requirements. So um, obviously international travel is something a little bit different. Um, and of course, teleworking policy. So um, we, that's another thing that we've learned from the, the town halls in the spring. We're moving forward with our existing policy. There is a, a policy being uh, bargained system-wide uh, for telework, but we have an existing policy here on campus. So Lori, do you want to give an update on the labor relations on the meet and confer uh, updates as well as teleworking very briefly here? Absolutely. Thank you, President Yao. Yeah. With respect to the uh, testing and vaccination, I'm you know, pleased to, to say that CSUU did sign an agreement uh, system-wide on the testing program that does include the proof of vaccination. So um, we're very grateful for that. Uh, that's already been managed at the system level. For our locals, we will be meeting with two of the other unions next week to address this question and to meet and um, to look to move forward on the testing program. With respect to the telecommuting policy, as Dr. Yao mentioned, we have had a policy in existence uh, since 2010. We, as opposed to modifying that or making changes in light of the fact that the system does look to be producing a um, one policy for all, we will utilize the existing policy at this time. And uh, more to come on that. Thank you, Lori, appreciate it. Okay, next slide, please. All right, next steps, obviously, you know, I said earlier, we hope to get these things uh, in place um, so that we can have a seamless transition when the CSU policy goes into effect. Uh, as I stated, we're moving forward. Lori, thank you for the update, the attestation process and hopefully verification and testing. Uh, we have the meeting conferred timeline. Lori, I should have waited for this slide uh, for that. Um, staffing resources, we are working diligently to make sure we have the staffing resources we need to, to pull things off this fall. Um, with required testing, communication and tracking, contact tracing, as well as custodial needs. Obviously, the